Arizona Sunshine 2 is a VR-based linear zombie shooter supporting four-person campaign co-op and a standalone multiplayer horde mode. Taking some inspiration from shows like Zombieland and movies like Castaway, Sunshine 2 has a decidedly grim comedic tone reflected through a protagonist somewhat maddened by isolation and the relentless presence of the zombie horde, nicknamed Fred. The story of Arizona Sunshine wastes little time, picking up as soon as the player completes a short introduction to its essential mechanics. Events kick off with the crash of a helicopter near the player's home, and has you rushing to the wreck site, desperate for any human interaction, having been alone for a long time. Instead of human interaction, the game has you rescue the lone surviving dog from the crash, and the two of you venture on to find the mysterious Patient Zero that the helicopter had been searching for. <coughs> from here, the game ventures on a grand tour of different locations, from international airports, to train yards, to urban sprawl, and eventually a hospital. Throughout this journey, you have only the companionship of man's best friend, and contact via radio with another survivor who helps guide the player from one objective to another as the story develops. The dog, hastily dubbed Buddy, becomes a critical tool in navigating the game world, and helpfully assists at killing zombies on command, making him useful for preserving ammunition and breaking up attacking threats. At times, Buddy also helps by retrieving keys, removing obstructions, or pointing the way through difficult terrain. Buddy is a centerpiece of the game's story, and is a well-executed mechanic that includes the ability to pet and play fetch with different objects found in the game's world. The campaign is lengthy, but paced adequately for the story that plays out. This is not a game that achieves the mythical status of Half-Life Alex, but it was never trying to compete in that sphere of gaming. Arizona Sunshine is dumb zombie fun, and does its best to play that fun up to the almost satirical at times, especially when the ultimate antagonist to the story is revealed in the last 30 minutes of the game. Arizona Sunshine offers four levels of difficulty, which are balanced around a single player, and become much easier to overcome with more people involved. The footage you see here was shot in two-person co-op, and never once were we team-wiped through the entire course of the game. My dad and I are both experienced VR players, so our standard of difficulty is probably higher than the average VR player. But co-op does have an entertainment factor, that still makes the lower overall challenge fun. Every good zombie game needs a good horde mode to keep the fun going after the story ends, and this mode, while sparse, uses the tools available to it well. At the time of writing, there are only two horde maps. Canyon is likely to be the smallest map on offer, and feels like it was the proof of concept for the mode in general. Players are restricted to a small pavilion with mostly handguns to defend themselves. There isn't much freedom of movement here, placing significant emphasis on ammunition management and team coordination. It's easy to be overrun, and the map restricts more powerful weapons until much later. Trailer Park is a larger playspace that allows players more freedom of movement and spawns in more powerful weapons to take advantage of it. This map is my personal favorite, since it affords players more agency in dealing with escalating difficulty. Mechanically, this mode has more in common with Call of Duty zombies than anything else. Zombies start out weak, slow, and sparse in numbers, with each round increasing the number and strength of attackers. There isn't a mystery box or weapon purchase station. Instead, New weapons appear on the map at specific places as rounds are completed, affording a greater variety of loadouts the longer that players survive. Ammunition and food appear every five rounds during intermission, with crafting items awarded to players based on performance. These can be turned into different explosives and used to kill large numbers of zombies, making them an important part of long-term strategy as they save ammunition that becomes more and more rare with each intermission cycle. 
Arizona Sunshine 2 is a worthy successor in the series, and yet another notch in Vertigo Games' growing belt of zombie-themed titles. This is the same developer behind After the Fall, which I've also reviewed on this channel, and which places a greater emphasis on the multiplayer aspect than the Arizona series. Vertigo Games leverages the Unity engine to great effect, and gets better at it with each title they develop. Getting a game to run natively on Oculus means it's as close to plug-and-play as wireless VR can be, taking only a moment to mount the headset and load the game, as opposed to AirBridge and Steam VR, which require more fussing around to get spun up. The dog is an easy highlight for Arizona 2. It's clear a lot of thought went into its implementation, and likely consumed a significant amount of the game's budget. Buddy works flawlessly, navigates the world efficiently, and never once got stuck or buggy during gameplay. NPC companions are difficult to implement seamlessly, especially in VR, where Bethesda eyes and bad animations are even more noticeable. Weapons are expertly modeled, and largely based on real-world guns. While the names of these weapons are not explicitly stated anywhere that I can find, their live counterparts are uncanny. My personal favorites by far are the Remington 7600, oh, yeah, thank you, thank you. Ruger Redhawk Magnum, and Stoger Sawed-Off Coach Gun. These weapons are very high damage per shot, making the best use of limited ammunition, though at the cost of needing more attention to reload. Two-handed weapons remain a tough challenge for VR games to implement, and the same issues present in After the Fall continue here. Rifles feel awkward and difficult to aim, since there is no physical connection to hold controllers in line together. This makes it easy to miss charge handles, brake actions, and pumping mechanisms. Several ostensibly two-handed weapons, like the Remington Model 7600, are actually easier to use one-handed between pumps. Several machine guns are also usable in this way, if fired in single shot, effectively trading fire rate for accuracy. Reloading becomes almost impossible during frame rate lag which tends to be more common in multiplayer horde mode. My best guess is that controller position data is tied to frame rate, so when frames drop, it's possible for the game to miss critical parts of the reload process. It effectively doesn't see that an action or charge handle was fully cycled, so the weapon fails to fire when the trigger is next pulled. All the worse that this tends to happen during intense combat encounters making weapons less reliable the more hostiles are on screen. Arizona 2 calls for a lot of battery power to render its environments, which can be a problem during longer horde mode play sessions. Without an extended battery, it's possible to kill the Oculus from fully charged during a single horde match, if you last long enough. This can be a real bummer, and was responsible for at least one team wipe during one of our more successful runs. Extended batteries are recommended for more experienced players. More content is expected in the future, but for the moment, the depths of Horde are explorable with about an hour per map. The more competitive players like myself can spend much more time honing survival strategy and reaching farther out into higher level rounds. But it does eventually get boring when you hit your skill ceiling and can't seem to push through it. If you're looking for a good VR game, Arizona Sunshine offers a well-built campaign mode and the foundations of a robust horde mode, though it does need more content to reach its full potential. The story isn't award-winning, but it does carry the player effectively through the campaign mode without leaving a sense of boredom. The overall tone and direction are presented with a sense of campy confidence that leaves this title with a sense of identity that I hope to see in future sequels and DLC. If you like VR shooters, this is probably your jam. That's all I have for today. Catch you all later.